Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. And of course, following the global scale of coronavirus, it looks like a lot of institutions are either shutting down or practicing social distance. Now, there's a new development, and I'll be speaking to Kofi Tonto. He's the head of information and public affairs um, at the Embassy of the Republic of Ghana in the USA. We're hearing that oh. they have um, shut down. And so we want to find out if that really is true and what the situation is. So, hello, Kofi. Good morning. Morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you're well as well. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it's about 4.30, 4.39 a.m. here okay. in the U.S. We're sorry uh, for having to wake you up this early, but it's also about the development at the U.S. Embassy, the Ghana Embassy in the U.S. We're hearing that there has been a directive to shut down. Is that really true? Uh, yeah, that's definitely true. Is this uh, Bellamunda? Yes, this is Mundi. Bella Mundi, by the way. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah so can, yeah, can you some, give us some uh, updates on that? Okay. All right. Definitely. Uh, so it's true. Uh, we we met um, at the executive level um, in the evening last um, yesterday, actually. Okay. And we had a discussion around what we needed to do to protect our clients and then also to protect our staff. Um, mind you, the um, embassy um, reports to the foreign ministry. Mm. So we take inspiration from everything the foreign ministry does and then also from the government. Okay. So we've been following very closely all the directives um, coming from Ghana and then also directives in our host nation. We follow what the presidency is saying here at United States. And also CDC, which is the uh, Center for okay. merge it with what our, our government is saying. And based on that, we then determine what we have to do. So what we decided to do is not to shut down the embassy entirely, but okay. to suspend our consular services, which includes the provision of our passports and visas. Okay. And then we also have other consular services, but these two are our primary uh, consular services that we provide. So we've sus suspended okay. both physical, which is folks who come in physically. All right. And then we've also suspended folks who mail it to us. Um, so you can't do either or um, okay. until further notice. Yeah. When you say until further notice, that means there's no direct timeline as to when the suspension will be lifted? No, because re remember, everything we do um, is founded on what our mother agency tells us and what our mother government tells us. So as you know, uh, for example, the travel advisory that came a few days ago um, was a bit indefinite based on precautionary measures and how the situation pans out. So we have to also follow suit and then closely uh, monitor the decisions that are coming from Ghana and then also closely monitor the decisions that are happening here in the U.S. and then take a decision as to when to re resume uh, consular services. Okay. So as it stands, it's indefinite pending um, advisory from our relevant um, authorities. Yeah. Okay, so that means that all official travels as well have been suspended. But if I may ask as well, is there anybody in that office who may have, um, you know, been infected by the virus? Do you have any details on that, on, especially about the Ghanaians living in the U.S.? No, as it stands, no. Uh, we haven't officially heard of any Ghanaian who's been infected. Mind you, um, here in the United States, we have the HIPAA law. So um, they, that, um, that um, stops um, people from sharing medical information from, of, 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 of patients. All right. So unless a Ghanaian comes out and, and declares so, uh, the U.S. medical um, um, outfits will not put that information out there. And then also when they uh, de-aggregate the information, uh, on a race level or ethnicity level, that is when we would know. But typically, they'll probably do um, at the very high level, maybe Caucasian, African American, okay. Hispanic. Um, they may not necessarily do um, 
ethnic, ethnic Ghana exactly. or this. Yeah. Right. So if if we had that data from CDC or a reliable source, that's what we can rely on. As it stands, we haven't had an official um, email or confirmation from a Ghanaian who okay. openly came and said, "This is my status." Yeah. Um, and, and we wouldn't even put that information, information out there. We out, also exactly. want to make sure that we don't um, add to any panic or, or fear. Okay. So what we will do, though, is continuously... Um, I haven't slept since um, 12 a.m. here. I'm closely monitoring everything that's happening here in the U.S. and then also in Ghana. In Ghana, okay. If we do have a circumstance where a Ghanaian is in need, mm. and need here is patience, because we wouldn't necessarily go... If someone... Uh, for example, God, God forbid, has tested positive. Mm, yeah. We wouldn't necessarily go and say, come to the embassy, because the right thing to do is to follow the medical advice provided. Okay. But we step in if a person's rights have been infringed on. Yeah. You know, if or someone is being abused because he or she is a Ghanaian. Once that person's rights have been infringed on or abused that's when we come in you know or if okay. someone has been unlawfully mm -hmm. detained then or anything as a coronavirus then we will come in so okay. we, we segregate our role from what the role mm -hmm. of our uh, the health officials are we want to make sure and advise all Ghanaians to follow because here in the United States, you have the local level, mm. you have the county level, okay. you have the state, and then you have the federal level. So all these levels have authorities and information that they've sort of like bring together and designate and down. So you, right. wherever you live, just follow the instructions provided. And you'll, and be, you'll fine. be fine. All right, quick one. Yeah. So if anybody still needs your services, even though, um, you know, some of them have been suspended, how can they reach you? And I'm talking so about the embassy. Release, if you look at our release, we provided three emails. Yeah. Each dedicated to a service. So okay. we provided emails for... Um, visa, we provided emails for passport, and then we also provided emails for chancery. So visa, passport, obviously, it aligns. Okay. So no questions there. But the chancery mm -hmm. is if anyone finds himself or herself in some type of jeopardy or danger or anything like that, you can reach out to us. All right. And we'll definitely uh, get back to you again. We are closely mm -hmm. monitoring everything. All right. Um, I, in particular, and another officer have been assigned to to make sure that we follow everything that's going on and advise the ambassador and the leadership accordingly. So if anyone needs help, please do reach out to us, but make sure that the help you need falls within the, the remit the, or the, the descriptions right. that I Right, exactly. So okay. We, so quickly, let me put them out. So it's passports at Ghana Embassy uh, DC dot org. So the first one is passports at Ghana Embassy DC dot org. The second is visa at Ghana Embassy DC dot org, and the third one is chantry at Ghana Embassy DC dot org. And these are the emails that have been put out. I've been speaking to Kofi Tonto. He's the head of information and public affairs at the Ghana Embassy in the USA. Thank you so much for speaking to us. And I yeah, hope I'm, you can get I'm some, some rest now. Thank you. Okay.